Well, we've looped back to this now. If you've been an avid fan of the channel for the last few months, you might have remembered me mentioning this project before. It was on the very first episode of this adapted series, the Minecraft one. And as I said back then, I kind of found this project by accident. It was just a single Wikipedia page listing future gaming movies and Right at the bottom of that list was a to-be-announced double release of EA's The Sims and also EA's Sim City. At the time, I was awfully surprised, and now... I'm somewhat less so, but I am also a whole lot more confused. The Sims is absolutely massive, you know? Being one of those magical IPs that just attracts everybody. We weren't all given Nintendo consoles or the latest Battlefield game or whatever, but if there's two games absolutely every household contained, despite any gender, interests, or gamer score, it would be Wii Sports because yeah, and The Sims. So having so much immense worldwide appeal is of course going to open the floodgates for a transition to the movie screen. It just makes a lot of sense. Wait, they're not making a Wii Sports movie too, are they? No, okay, no, 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 no. How, how would that even work? But for The Sims, this idea seems much more favorable to them. Add on to the fact that they're attached to the hip to one of the most money-hungry gaming companies in the industry, EA, and the thought of profiting off of another source of revenue only makes more sense. Unfortunately, there's not a definitive worst gaming company of every year, but after all sorts of controversies like loot boxes and the nightmare that was Star Wars Battlefront 2, the company wasn't looking too hot in 2017. It was probably overthrown as the worst by Bethesda being consumeristically evil in Fallout 76 in 2018, and in 2020, EA then just turned out to make actually a load of Sims expansions. Huh, I never even noticed. Even still, a thing to keep note of here is that all that I'm going to mention today is based off of rumors. We've already covered another adaptation rumor, but this one is being sourced by the GWW, or Geeks Worldwide, which from my research about, seems a whole lot more trustworthy as a source. I mean, anything would be in comparison, but you get what I mean. I mean, a whole bunch more news articles certainly hopped on the bandwagon this time around. Even still, do take things with a grain of salt. Though there is also a whole bunch of information to go through, surprisingly. And the idea of a Sims movie isn't actually all too new. In fact, there's quite a bit of history there, with another Sims movie having the full confirmed announcement back in May 2007 literally around the time I was actually playing The Sims 2. So let's have a look at how things could have been that may also help shape our understanding of this new potential current one going on. The date is May 25th, 2007, and who was helming this project but none other than 20th Century Fox. Back in this ancient era, Fox had purchased the rights to The Sims to use in a film production, though oddly enough, the franchise only actually had two mainline games by this point. Not even Sims 3 was out yet. But every time I look closer, I swear the number of side games seemed to like triple. So I guess there was still plenty of content everywhere. There was online, busting out, my Sims, stories, I mean, my goodness. Anyway, on the crew for this development hell Sims movie was Brian Lynch as the writer, who's been known for... Uh... I had a source that said Scary Movie 3, but I can't back that up. But Big Helium Dog is there. W what? Okay, but the best IMDb page I can find for Brian Lynch actually puts him in the works with Illumination, writing The Secret Life of Pets, the two Minion movies, oh, and Puss in Boots too. Bit of a mixed bag, ain't he? On the production side, we then have John Davis, known for iRobot, the Garfield movies, Richie Rich, and the upcoming Jungle Cruise. Huh. Now, while I don't really know what to extrapolate from that data, we do actually know precisely what kind of plotline this original Sims movie was hoping to follow. And it's a weird direction. It's almost what I actually described in our Minecraft video. The film would have taken place in Pleasant View, one of the three choices in The Sims 2, and also the place in Sims 1, but like 25 years later. And possibly this is the same place as Sunset Valley in number 3, but anyway. In Pleasant View, citizens are always well-mannered, but newcomer Andy starts to uncover the real Pleasant View. For not only is Pleasantville full of cheating, lying, deceiving, and secret hidden people like the Goths, that's the family in-game, not a demographic. Don Lothario, another in-game dude. And the struggling newbies, again, not actual newbies, though I guess they could be new to town. They're another family. It's just like the newbie family were originally the notable tutorial family in the first game. It's getting a little hard to read. Anyway, not only is all that going on, but they are also being ruled by a greater power. Andy is terrified to discover that they are in fact stuck in a video game being played by millions universally. Yes, that is the actual plot. It's a fourth wall breaking pseudo story. 
Apparently around this time, EA was also thinking of making an animated TV series out of the My Sims games? Huh, interesting. Either way, this bigger project was to be done in live action. 2007 live action. Scary. The way this is all explained in Davis's story is that this 16 year old kid and his friend get their hands on the Sims Infinity Pack. But what they realize is that they can scan their own world because this is the most lifelike Sims game ever. And as they're playing, they all of a sudden realize that what they are playing on the game is having an effect on their real world. So they found a game within the game world and it interacts with their game world. Even in just description form, it's a little skew whiff to follow. Anyway, with all that being the game plan going ahead, news of the film died down and stayed dead for 12 years. No updates, no changes, or even words of the difficulties they had. But there was a definitive end that was very generous to give us, actually. Remember how I said this was being done by 20th Century Fox? Well, can you guess what went wrong there? In 2019, Disney swallowed Fox, and in the process, they officially confirmed after their acquisition that the project had been henceforth struck down and completely cancelled. But really, maybe that would have been a blessing on things considered. But it does bring up an interesting point. How do you possibly make a Sims movie? It's literally about simulating the dramas and antics of real life. Are you always doomed to either a boringly basic slice of life story, or will you always have to dive into the fantasy elements of the series and point out the simulated truths of their reality? Well, I'd somewhat have an answer for you, as we now come to the currently ongoing version of The Sims Movie. Funnily enough, despite it being in a development process for so long, even when it was officially stopped, it wasn't stopped for long, as more news appeared just 13 months later in April of 2020. Some people really want to make a Sims movie. In this variation of events, instead of 20th Century Fox handling the production side of things, now it's set to be going forward with Legendary Pictures, which is a much more investing direction to go with, considering the track record Legendary have had in recent years, especially with game adaptations. I mean, it's easy to forget what logos you saw before each movie, especially when there's like six to go through these days, but Legendary Pictures are most notably relevant when you remember that they gave a helping hand to Paramount and co-produced likes of Warcraft in 2016. Okay, an interesting take there since apparently critics hate it but the audiences loved it. Hmm. But then they nailed it a few years later, helping on the industry changer that is Detective Pikachu in 2019. Okay, so maybe I was exaggerating a little bit on how grand it was, but even still, to be part of the team who nailed such an adaptation? You gotta admit, it makes you awfully curious to see how this pans out. And while last time we had all sorts of details about specific crew members in their different roles, here none of that is the case. There are no names attached to any element of this project yet, but we do still know all sorts of details about it regardless. And actually, I've been saying project, but really it's projects. This isn't just the Sims movie anymore, it's Sim City too. Which I only realized when researching for this that Sim City is the true original Sims. Uh, it makes sense, but everything started in 1989 with the original Sim City. And from there, it sparked several Sim spin off, with of course, The Sims being one of the biggest. Wow, I'm just baby aged to have not had that register in my head. Ah, but if you have that, skaboo! As only you can help balance out our skewed unsubbed ratio count. Also, on streams today, we're just chatting. So, in an hour, come join me. Let's have a conversation. Films, games, anything. Come see us. Anyway, with SimCity being the true origins of the franchise, it's actually the first project of the two set to be in motion and likely the first to release. In fact, according to rumors, Legendary Pictures has already begun with developing a live action movie based on The Sims. And with just 2020 to work with and a whole bunch of indoor time, who knows how much leaping progress they could have made in just seven months. Whatever the case, here's their spin. The film is being described as a comedic version of Roland Emmerich-esque disaster movies set inside the world of Sim City. Roland Emmerich, if you haven't memorized names in the film industry, is the writer who's made all sorts of massive disaster films. 2012 being the one I organically know, but then there's also the 1998 Godzilla, The Day After Tomorrow, and the Independence Day films. Dude's all about massive city-scale destruction, which may not always be the most artistically rich content, apart from, from a technical standpoint, I guess. But it's great for popcorn eating moviegoers, and it certainly keeps you energized. Oh god, so Emmerich hasn't been part of a release in four years, but apparently a project he is on is Moonfall. All about trying to save Earth when the moon suddenly falls out of orbit. 
What? Whatever the case, though I said previously that no names were attached to the project, that only applies to the new Sims movie. Sim City, the movie, is a bit more moved along, I guess, so we do actually know that the script is being penned by Mike Rosilio. Though, here's a red flag for you. I can't find the guy. Whenever I look up Mike Rosilio, I'm pointed to Mike Rosillo, the YouTuber with like a million subscribers. So either this was completely made up, it's the wrong name and or spelling was inserted, or the guy's a complete newcomer without an IMDB page and just running with a style to follow, but not the experience to upkeep it whilst holding a massive IP on his shoulders. We'll see how that goes. Studio executives overseeing the development of the film are set to be Ali Mendez, which lines up nicely previously working on Detective Pikachu, Godzilla King of the Monsters, and hey, Enola Holmes, as well as John Silk, whom I struggle to find easily, but comes up as working on Terminator Salvation, It, and the new Tom and Jerry film. It's something. Now beyond that, there's no other real world names linked to this, but there are some very basic character and casting descriptions pitting our protagonist as simply dad, mum and son, and one bad guy in the villain. Sims is pretty simple. Another source fleshed it out faintly more by describing the film as starring a family of three, a middle aged mum, a dad aged 30 to 49 and a 15 year old teenage boy. It's not much, but it's a hint more. But with the details out of the way, let's address the Sim City elephant in the room. Is this really the correct plotline for the film? Just a massive scale disaster show? From what I've read online, a lot of people are unconfident on this take and I can understand why. But at the same time, what kind of plot is there to tell in a city simulator? Unless it's about some mayor actually doing his duties with a few magically fast upgrade systems, there's not really a lot of content going on there for a two hour runtime. But then on the other hand, jumping to disaster strikes while very much an element of everyone's playtime at some point or another is great fun for the time it takes to destroy a city, but oftentimes gets very boring once the dust has settled and is usually restored soon afterwards. So it'll be interesting to see how the creators choose to pan this out. Even with things like 2012, it's not hailed as the best of cinema, so should it really be used as an inspiration? Or because The Sims is so open and kid friendly, maybe the critical response doesn't matter and as long as it's entertaining to the young minds in the audience, nobody else should really care. I don't know, seems like a tricky IP to handle to me. But alright, let's move on to the other one, the main event, Sims. Simple enough, right? Still being a pretty slippery IP to handle beyond the theatrics, but how is this rebirth version tackling things? Well, preliminary casting info has told us that a film adaption of The Sims is in the works, though information on the project remains scarce as it's in the early development stage, behind Sim City. Still, it appears that some characters will play dual roles from within The Sims game and out of it, already a notable change, taking a bit of a free guy approach from the sound of things, with the story handling the existence of the game itself. We'll talk more on it in a sec. What follows is a whole list of character descriptions, so bear with us for a minute. Early character descriptions include Katie as our main lead, a funny hot mess good to her core and likely our main protagonist. There's also Cliff, a supporting male described as Katie's best friend, a cute nerd. Then there's Amanda, Nelly in brackets, who is dating Cliff and described as pretty and slim. I don't know if Katie and Cliff are real or in-game, so I don't know which way around Amanda and Nelly are in-game and not, so sorry about that. It's a bit confusing. There's also Cora, Bella in parentheses, who's Katie's assistant, she's sarcastic and bitter. Dennis, studio worker, an uptight partner at Katie's firm. Jared, the womanizer and douchebag, lovely. There's Pam, Katie's mum. Rick Brackett's Still Nugget, what a name. A performer in a mixed martial arts historical musical. Whoa, that threw me through a loop. Surely Still Nugget is the Sims character, right? They don't exist in the real games, but come on, it must be, look at that name. And Bill, a chubby kid in The Sims who lives in the treehouse behind Katie and offers advice. Whew, <sighs> interesting. That's a lot to swallow, right? That's nine characters right off the bat. Thirteen if you count their alter egos, and it's still really hard to tell which way round their realities are. Treehouse Kid is clearly in the game, but is the martial arts musical real? Still Nugget suggests that the brackets are the game reality, yet Studio Worker sounds awfully real-worldly. And is Katie in game with a firm or out of game? Why do some characters have alts and not others? Are they just not confirmed yet? It's all really confusing and quite the ensemble work already. As for the story, there is none yet. These early casting descriptions is all there is to go on. 
There's a small family dynamic with the mum and some advice spewing kid. There's a workplace setting with an assistant partner and potential work douchebag. And then there's the best friend in a relationship and a cool dude in a musical. No tales of the world ending, maybe a hint of realising their simulated reality, but really, it kind of sounds like the story of a Sims player rather than a Sim. Maybe it's a kind of love story about meeting up with your love interest just online, or about discovering a glitch together and solving it. I really have no idea, I just pulled those out of nowhere. With just characters as a basis and not even something like the villain from the SimCity project, the open option for this film could really go in any direction, but that doesn't necessarily guarantee it'll be great though. Coming up with a plot for this kind of project is still a massive hurdle, since this is still just a slice of life simple story. The only highlights so far are a quirky musical and a mysteriously smart kid. Oh wait, is he just like an avatar for like some sort of secret genius or something? Ah, oh, whatever. If I was in charge of a Sims movie, I'd definitely lean more into the fantastical elements of the games that make it different from reality. You know, like how there are ghosts roaming the land and you can have children with them. There's the machines you can build that do these crazy things like stopping you from ever needing to go to the toilet again. Or how there are aliens confirmed in the world, as well as a greetable Grim Reaper. You can literally die of embarrassment. There's plants that eat people. All sorts of wacky antics in The Sims that make it way more interesting than reality. I want to see a story that incorporates some of that. Not to mention the soundtrack. It's not crazy, but so many of these tracks are iconic. Though a good bunch come from the buy mode and the build mode, which probably wouldn't be able to transfer too well, right? Unless the protagonist was at some kind of architecture firm and going around to build houses, but then maybe that wouldn't be good cinema. Uh, maybe they could do it by having like just a funky transition into a new house. We see it built up quickly in CGI form, staying true to the games, but then enter the house for the scene to continue. I don't know. However you spin things, those are all the things we know so far about The Sims movie and The Sims City movie. It's tricky. One's a disaster film and one I can barely decipher. Are they both doomed to fizzle out because of the nature of their IP? Or will there be a surprise hit in a franchise that has captured practically every household at least one time over the past few years? Who knows? I know I'd like the crazier side of things to show, but we'll just have to see how Legendary Pictures chooses to take things going forwards. If all of this even exists in the first place. There's not even an inkling of a release window yet. Maybe it was all just a dream or a fantasy in the first place. For now, my name's been Daz. You didn't really care, and I'll see you in a bit. Fun fact, all of those uh, gameplay trailers put back to back to back are over six hours long. But as a story beat, it would be interesting to have every character in a world be completely pansexual or omnisexual. You know, there are no limits in the sim world, so that would be interesting to see adapted. Also, that, uh, that, that one piece of footage that you were seeing, that's real. That's a real Sims 2 trailer. Times have changed, alright? <laughs> But yeah, thanks for making it all the way to the end. Not many people do. You saw me in my secret extra outfit. Maybe for the second time. I don't know how I'm editing this yet. You're a real, you're a real G. The code word is uh, hammer. Put it in a comment. I'll know what it means. No one else will know. Just incorporate it inside a comment. No one else will ever need to know.